My life has been transformed completely by photography. The magic of the camera is when you can change the meaning, the ordinary meaning of the object, into a meaning which you yourself create. Everything about Clarence John Lachlan suggests he not only was driven, he was obsessed. When people see his photographs, they evoke a sense of some sort of fundamental human experience. I think, you know, he was just a real artist, an artist with a camera. Clarence John Laughlin was a visionary photographer from New Orleans and is one of the most significant visual artists from the South. Long before photography was accepted as an art form, Laughlin created a legacy of 17,000 images, creating what is now recognized to be one of the most significant collections of American photography. In a professional career spanning 40 years, Laughlin photographed architecture, graveyards, found objects, and the human figure. To his supporters, he was creative and childlike. To his detractors, he was temperamental, narcissistic, demanding, and childish. His obsessive pursuit of work left him little time for deep personal relationships, but allowed him to earn success late in his life. His work remains enigmatic, prophetic, romantic, surrealist, modernist, each of these terms describing an aspect of both Laughlin's character and his achievements as a visual artist. Laughlin was clearly an innovator in the history of photography, not by trying to establish a style, but just simply by following his own vision and not worrying about whether or not other people fully understood it or fully appreciated it in his time. I think that for Laughlin, his imagery, in many ways, he's the iconography of, of Louisiana. I mean, when we think about Louisiana and its history, I don't know what a lot of people think about, but I tend to think of Laughlin's images. Clarence was born in 1905 and spent his childhood on a farm in southwest Louisiana by the banks of Bayou Teche. When Clarence was five, his father moved the family to New Orleans in order to find work. They struggled to provide for his sister, Laura, who had been crippled by polio. His mother, Emily Gajon, found the move from rural French Acadiana to the city a difficult transition and was described by Laughlin as a compulsive worrier a fanatic Catholic who did not like to go out. Clarence dreamed of going to Jesuit high school and becoming a priest. However, in 1918, his father became ill as Spanish influenza swept through the city of New Orleans. The family priest told Clarence that if he prayed hard enough, his father would live. It was a hopeless situation, Clarence later said, people were dying so fast you couldn't even get a doctor. Prayers didn't help, and his father died a few days before the end of World War I. Devastated, Clarence lost his faith and turned away from the church. With his father gone, Clarence left his childhood behind and dropped out of school to support his family. At the age of 14, he went to work selling produce in the Poydra Street Market. At 19, although he was able to move into his own apartment, he continued to have to support his mother and sister with a series of dreary bank jobs. By the 1930s, Laughlin was taking correspondence courses from LSU, reading Nietzsche and Baudelaire. He now dreamed of becoming a writer. But once again, fate intervened. He found photography, or as he would say, it found him. Somebody gave me a box camera, and after I had it for a month, I decided I was going to take it seriously. 
And I think Laughlin, having worked in a bank, which he hated, was confused about a lot of things that he tried to figure out by reading books. But he'd never even finished high school. So he had this unique view of, of history. So, and so did William Faulkner, who neither did he finish high school. These people were, were individualists who figured out things according to their own lights. So when he goes into photography, he's looking at photography in a completely unique way.